Hello. In this video, you'll learn about importing networks in the format of Esri shapefiles to your InfraWizard project. Esri shapefiles are commonly used for exchanging data between the hydraulic modeling applications and the GIS and BIM applications. I'll use it right now to import this sewage network from Sewer Gems to InfraWizard. The key point for the success of this process is to ensure that the shapefiles you export from the model include all the necessary data that InfraWizard needs to configure the network correctly. There are two types of shapefiles that we'll use in the export, which are polyline shapefiles and point shapefiles. All types of conduits in the hydraulic model are exported to polyline shapefiles, and these will appear in InfraWizard as pipe elements. The manholes, junctions, inlets, and outfalls are exported to point shapefiles and they will appear in InfraWizard as node elements. In order to prepare my shapefiles for export, I've created a set of custom tables apart from the main tables I use while working on the model. I created three tables for conduits, manholes, and outfalls because these are all types of elements to be exported in my model. Let's open each table and see what fields we need to include. For the manholes and outfalls, we need only to include two fields, which are label and ground elevation. The same thing would apply to any other type of junctions. You don't need to include the fields of coordinates because the coordinates data are embedded in the shapefile itself. For the conduits, the label field is mandatory. You don't need to include the fields of start node and stop node because InfraWizard will automatically recognize the connectivity between pipes and nodes based on the position of the nodes. If you are importing a gravity network, just like in my case here, you should include the fields of upstream and downstream invert levels, which are called here invert start and invert stop. This is important because the invert levels in a gravity network are part of the hydraulic design output, so we need to include them in the import. In case you're importing a pressure network, like from water gems, you'll not have to include these fields. And in that case, InfraWizard can calculate the invert levels of the pipes from the ground levels during import, based on the minimum soil cover you specify. We'll see this shortly while doing the import. The last part of the export data for conduits is related to the size data, and it can actually be done in several ways, depending on the complexity of your model and the way you prepare it. If you have a conventional network that contains only circular section conduits of a single cell, you need basically to export the inner diameter of the conduits. This field is called diameter in sewer gems. Although you can continue using the diameter field only and select a pipe material from InfraWizard's library during the import, this can sometimes get you unexpected results. The best practice that I highly recommend is to prepare the conduit catalog in your hydraulic model to match the pipe library in your InfraWizard project. First, I gave the conduit class I'm using in the model the same name of the corresponding pipe material in the InfraWizard project. Second, I verified that the value of inner diameter of all conduits in the conduit catalog are equal to the inner diameter of the corresponding size in the pipe library. If you're using more than one conduit class to represent several pipe materials, you should do the same thing for all of them. I'll now export the shape file for conduits, call it SW pipes, I'll then export the manhole shape file. It contains only two fields, as we said. And finally, export the outfall shape file. It has the same two fields in the manhole shape file, and it is important that these two fields have exactly the same names used in the manhole shape file so that InfraWizard can recognize them. Now I'll go to my InfraWizard project and select Import Shapefiles. 
I'll call my new network SW. And it's a gravity network, of course. Then select the shapefiles we've just exported. Click Next. Here I should define the settings of the import, mainly by selecting the data fields of the shapefiles, which InfraWizard should use to import the data of my network. For Pipe Name field, I'll select Label. For Invert Levels, you notice that I have two options. One is importing the levels directly from the shapefile by selecting the fields of Start and Invert Levels, and this is the normal case in Gravity Networks because I already have invert levels well-defined in the model based on the hydraulic design. The other option is to let InfraWizard calculate the pipe invert levels from the node ground levels. I'd use this option with pressure network models because in such models, you don't define the pipe invert levels, but only have a single level defined at each node, which is normally the ground level. So in that case, InfraWizard will calculate the invert levels from node ground levels based on the minimum soil cover I define here. I'd also select the centerline option for matching at nodes, which means that pipes of different diameters connected to the same node will have the same center level at the node. And this is the normal case for pressure networks. Now for my sewage network, I'll select the option Read from Fields and select the fields INV Start and INV Stop. There is an additional option here to force matching at nodes, but this can only be used in very special cases, because if you select this option, InfraWizard will change the invert levels of the network to force matching of pipe levels at the nodes. I'll not select this option for my import. The next setting is pipe material, and because we included it in the export, by using the conduit class to represent pipe material, I'll select the option Read from Field, and select the field name Material. By doing this, InfraWizard will match the material name from this data field with the corresponding pipe material in the pipe library of my project. If you have a simple project with one type of pipes, you can cancel the material field in the shapefile export and select the option Use Constant during import, then assign a pipe material directly here. However, I always prefer to include the material field in the export. After matching the conduit catalog in the model with the pipe materials in InfraWizard's pipe library, as we've just done. Then we reach the pipe size. We also have two options for importing the pipe size. The first option is to import it from a single field, which is the easy way to use in simple models. This will be, in our case, the field called D, where we included the pipe diameter during the export. The other option is to use a set of detailed fields to represent the pipe size. In this case, you should define individual fields for the section shape, the diameter of circular section conduits, and the span and rise for the box section conduits. This option facilitates accurate import of the more complex models, and we'll test it shortly. One important thing to bear in mind is that the fields of diameter, span, and rise should all represent the inner dimensions of the conduit. The diameters that will be imported here will be matched with the standard values of inner diameter in the pipe library for the specified material. Same thing applies for the box section conduits. In case the imported pipe diameter or the span and rise of a box section conduit are not found in the library, InfraWizard will automatically add it as a new size during import. You just need to remember that these dimensions always have to be the inner dimensions of the conduits. The next part is the number of cells which represents the number of barrels of the conduit. And since I'm importing a conventional sewage network where all pipes have a single cell, I didn't include a field for this in the exported shapefile. All I need to do is select Use Constant and keep the default value of 1. But if I'm exporting a model that contains conduits with multiple cells, I'd include a field for the number of cells in the export. We'll see an example of this in a minute. For the nodes, we have only two elements. One is the label, and the other is the ground levels, for which I'll select the field called Elev GND. I have an option also to set a constant ground level if I don't have the ground levels in the shapefile. There is a useful option here to save the settings of import so you can reuse the same settings again in importing other models. I'll do this right now. Now I'll click Finish to complete my import. My network is now imported. I'll go to the Manage Networks panel to hide the other networks. This is my new SW network.
You'll notice that InfraWizard has recognized the sizes of the imported pipes and associated them with the standard sizes in the pipe library. For example, this pipe has a nominal diameter of 200 millimeters because InfraWizard has matched the inner diameter of it with the inner diameter of the nominal size 200 millimeters and consequently assigned this size to the pipe. Similarly, we have these pipes with a nominal diameter of 250 millimeters and this one with 315 millimeters. Now let's try a more advanced import from our hydraulic model. I'll do some arbitrary changes to the model, just for illustration. I'll change the number of barrels of this conduit to 3. And we'll add a box section conduit to my model. I'm using here a catalog class called Box Sections that is not available in the pipe library of my InfraWizard project. I'm doing this on purpose to see what InfraWizard will do in this case. I'll set the size of this conduit to have a span of 3 meters and a rise of 2 meters. I'll also set the number of barrels of this conduit to 4. And finally, define its invert levels. Now my model includes conduits with multiple cells and includes circular section and box section conduits. I need so to extend the conduit table to include the necessary data fields for the import. I have here the diameter field which works only for the circular conduits, so I'll add two new fields for span and rise to include the dimensions of the box section conduits. I also need the field section type to indicate the section shape of the conduit. And finally, I'll add the field number of barrels because I have conduits with multiple cells. These fields are now showing the span and rise of my box section conduit, but take care of the units because it's showing them in meters, not in millimeters. We'll consider this during the import. And I have the fields of section shape and number of barrels. I will re export the shape files. Now I have four more fields, number of barrels, rise, span, and conduit shape. I should only use the field section type label, so I'll change the name of the field section type ID to avoid confusion during import. I'll then go to InfraWizard and delete the network we imported before to do a new import. Again, selecting Import Shapefiles, call it SW, and select the shapefiles we've just exported.
Instead of defining all the settings again, I'll use the settings we saved during the previous import as a base. These were the settings we used in the last import, but we need to do some changes because we're now importing more data. Instead of importing the section size from a single field, I'll select the option Detailed Fields. I'll select the field of Section Shape. For the box section dimensions, I'll select the fields Span and Rise. And we'll adjust the units to be meters instead of millimeters. Now I have a field for the number of barrels, so I'll select the option Read from Field, then select the relevant field. The fields of nodes data will remain the same, label and ground elevation. Then click Finish. Here is the new network. Again, the pipes are imported and matched with the pipe library according to the inner diameter and are assigned the corresponding nominal diameters just like the first import. You'll find here that InfraWizard has read the number of cells we assigned to this pipe, so it is now defining the pipe as having three cells of 315 mm diameter. The box section conduit is also well defined. It is four cells, three meters by two meters each. Let's check the pipe library, because we've imported a pipe class for the box conduit that was not in the pipe library. You'll see that InfraWizard has created a new material in the pipe library with the material name we imported called box sections. It then added a standard size of one meter by one meter, which is the basic default size, and added another size of three meters by two meters, which we used for our conduit. InfraWizard assigned a default thickness of 250 millimeters to the slab, inner wall, and outer wall of the box section, because these values are not included in the imported data. Let's export a 3D BIM model for this network to see what it looks like. I'll change the node type of these two nodes first to dummy to expose the box section. Now export the BIM model. This is the BIM model of the network we imported. We have the conduit of three cells, 315 millimeters diameter. If I remove the manhole, you can see the cross section of it. And here is the box section conduit of four cells, three meters by two meters. This is everything you need to know about importing shapefiles. In the next session, we'll try the fourth method of importing networks to InfraWizard, which is using text files. Thanks for watching. See you soon.